shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's going on, baby? Nothing, nothing, man. It's going down, man. Hey, man. <laughs> we got somebody in here today. You know, she's experienced. <laughs> She's not new to being in front of the cameras. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure she's used to that, too. Mm -hmm. She's been around for a while. The people know her. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I ain't never said that before. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Taysha Lex, how you doing, baby? I am great. How are y'all? Man, you here. You in the building, I'm man. I'm in here. So, okay. um, yeah. It's good to meet you. Nice meeting you, too. Man, you cute little girl, ain't she? Yes, sir. Little lady. Is she a lady? Lady. I look like a little girl, lady. though. You know? yeah. Let me find out. No, you ought to be happy about that. I am. For real. I am. That's dope. I think my parents. I think my parents. Did, are they like that too? Yeah, they look pretty young. Wow, that's dope. Where you where are you originally from? You from Dallas? I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio. Whoa. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. I didn't know that. I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio, and then I grew up in Fort Worth. Oh, you from Stop Six. You know, I mean, graduated from well, Dunbar. Red, you, know you would do wow. something to you. You better put your purse and up. <laughs> <laughs> don't walk down the alley late at night. Look, I don't do nothing she unless I'm your lessons, okay? on the move. Don't let that cute face fool you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that one. For real. So, so okay. Let's let's go back. Yes, let's okay. go back. How far back? As far back as you can remember. Damn. Okay. You about to be really talking about some. No. What, well, go ahead. What, let's just tell, <laughs> tell us about it. We ain't got nothing but time. You okay, know, let's do it. it. Let's do it. How was it growing up in Fort Worth when you were a kid? And what about Ohio? Were, let's go all the way back. I don't know how old you were. Ohio, I don't really like remember because I, I was still very young. That's okay. why I said as far back as she yeah, can remember. Yeah, so it would be it would be Fort Worth for okay. me. That's where I was raised. Dope. So okay, how old were you when you got to Fort Worth? Three. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that, that was right. about. Well, she straight stop six baby. Let's go. Yeah. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was about three. So I I was raised in Fort Worth, but mm -hmm. growing up in Fort Worth, I was always the sore thumb. I always stuck out. Like yeah. I was always very different from everybody. Yeah. Um, small town, but like, I was one of them kids that like I always watched a lot of music videos. I was always like into like music, so it was like my escape from everything. So I was the different one. I was the one that kind of was cool with everybody. I, I'm still like that. I had friends that walk all different walks of mm. life. So that was me in Fort Worth. I was kind of like the person that was just like neutral to everything. I was cool with everybody. Like I could be with the hood. I could be with the suburb kids. I could yeah. be with everybody. Yeah. So that's how I was raised. And my parents are originally from Michigan. What yeah. part? So my dad's from Jackson. Okay. So not too far from Detroit. And my mom's from Ann Arbor. Okay, okay. So we were we were first generation South. So being the first kids like in the South, like I was still raised like, like you know like parents up north it was like a little different. Like, right. We, we weren't taught to say like yes ma'am and no sir and stuff like like that. that like that's unheard of. It's wow. more looked at as like this ain't no slave. You know wow. this ain't no slave shit. So, wow, that's yeah, the way it so went down. You, yeah. So it, we were just raised very different. But that's then it's dope, like we were, we were in the And that's so South, funny man. when you said that because I remember my mom moved here from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And I would always tell, and the kids would answer her and say, yes, ma'am, whatever. She's like, don't call me Don't that. call me no ma'am. <laughs> what she called me ma'am for? But back home, I remember when I was a kid. And, yeah. I would, and my mom would call me and I'd be like, yes. Mm -hmm. And my grandma would be like, don't answer her to say yes, mom. Yes. That's how we, yes, mom or yes, mommy or, you exactly. know, whatever. Same it way. wasn't just yes. Same you know way. what I mean? So it's just the same thing here. It's just that you can't just be as a child saying yes or no. Yeah, or, you know, exactly. You have to say, I was yeah, you need way. to act like y'all really. Let me just be honest with y'all. You <laughs> niggas, man. You know, you niggas better say ma'am and sir and all that. We are in Ooh, that America. Would make my mama cringe. Really? What? She would cringe. Why? She didn't, Why you, what? She didn't want me called ma'am. She was like, we are not in the South. Are oh, you serious? So the South is the only one doing that? Yeah, she felt like that was like a thing. Well, I'm going to be honest. Different. Because of slavery. That's what yeah. she was saying. Yeah, she was like, hmm. I don't want to be called ma'am. I never thought that. I never thought of that. I thought it was a, 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 it's a southern sign thing. of respect. Yeah, it's a southern right. But you say it's not. It's not. You still think it's not. I mean, I say yes. I, I, I just want to know like, what you think. Because then when you watch a movie, so you're very, and you're very just, yeah. I'm a, I mean. No, you're a young type person. <laughs> no, I say yes. Yes. Same say thing. Yes. Real fly, though. <laughs> I already know you're not really that. I'm be like, no, no, we couldn't say so yes. So it's an old. You know. Did you go to school here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I did. Yeah. You going to say yeah to me? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. We're on boss talk right now. You know what I'm talking about? So, you know. Yeah. We're not getting too formal. Yeah. So, it's yes. like, so in school, did, did the teacher say yes, ma'am? Because this was a thing. Yes, it was. Um, How did you get around it? How did I get around saying that? Um, I was very quiet, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I was so, a quiet kid. If you was very quiet, so you quiet so you wouldn't have to say yes, ma'am? Yeah. I, I was quiet so I didn't have to answer nobody. I hated being questioned and stuff like that. So I was, I was one of those kids that was very much so like to myself and my imagination was like. So you weren't a trouble kid then? No, I wasn't like really or a Or a teacher's kid, pet, which one? Kind of. I was kind of like the teacher's pet, but then I was cool. So I was cool with everybody mm-hmm. at the same time. But like my teachers was like, oh, we just love teacher. She's so good. But teenage years was just a little bit different for me. I was, whew, I was wild. What was the wildest thing you did as a teenager? Let me just tell you, she the was wild. fast. I could tell the when she wildest. said that. No, yeah, I she wasn't was fast. fast. She said no, it. No, I was fast. No, no I wasn't. I wasn't. So let's talk about wild. What no. you do? You had a, what you had a third fights. Eight? No, a lot of oh, fights. You had a third eight snub No, no, I did fight a lot though. <laughs> okay, I fought a lot. Boys. Girls, anybody, anybody. It did, it didn't like matter. you could get it. Was it because you were small or you were like, I gotta get with these? I think it was just like they test you. Yeah, they tested me. Did you ever like, have oh, a she, knife? Yeah, she, no, I ain't care. Well, no I knife, got a man. knife pulled on me when I was like eleven in Las Vegas. We had just moved up there, <laughs> and uh, I was I was bad. You know, I whooped somebody. Yeah, he was. So bad. I, I I I had a fight with this boy at school. Right, I had just moved to Vegas, Northside, and I was in at school. Vegas? Yeah, and I was walking home. Me and my brother and sister. And the same boy I had fought, I don't know why he lived on my way home. <laughs> he jumped, he jumped out with a knife and was like, what? I was like, whoa. What? And we were country. We had never seen it like that. And I never walked that way again for about six months. What did months. you do? You ran? Yeah, I had to run. <laughs> and what do you do when somebody put a knife, knife out of you yeah. 11? Right. What do you do? Run. <laughs> you not going to fight him. Oh, I didn't have no gun or nothing. Right. I just like I, I, tr- I already whooped him. See, in Jamaica, you have rocks everywhere. You just pick up a rock and start throwing See? it <laughs> and run and run. I'm done. <laughs> so, what did you do that, that caused you to feel like you was bad? Like the craziest <clears throat> thing that you can remember having? A- Ooh, I moved out of the house when I was fifteen. Really? Mm-hmm. You don't look and like you were the raised type. with your mom and dad. I was typically yeah. Well, my parents lived in two separate homes, but I spent. Same amount of time with my mama and my daddy. Like, my daddy was very much so in my life. So, so you didn't feel like he was absent, so to say? In, at certain times. How old were you when they broke up? Five. So. Yeah, so for the longest, I felt like it was, you know, like my fault. You know, I blame myself a lot. Mm, why? So that's when I, you I, became I was, a troubled child. Was yeah, I was, a, I was a daddy's girl. Okay. So okay. when my dad left. And, and then you stayed and, with mom. And I say, well, mom, so I felt like, was it because of me? You know, mm-hmm. I felt like most your, kids always yeah, feel that that's way. A, that's a, yeah, I felt I like I didn't feel that way. <laughs> Are you no. an only child? No, no. How many of y'all? There's six of us total. Wow. And you the youngest? No, I'm in the middle. You're in the middle. Yeah. Okay. I'm in the middle. So you you really, you you was basically feeling like, okay, he left because of me? Out of all these other jokers, it was just me? Well, at the time, it was only me and my two sisters. Okay. And my little brothers came later. And okay. And I have an older half-brother. Okay. okay. And so, so yeah. I um, yeah, I felt, I felt like it was, you know, my fault because I was the closest to both of my parents. I'm still, like, Did you used to, to visit, both. like, your dad? Yeah, somewhere? yeah. We spent, like, summers there. He lived in Fort Worth? No, my dad actually lived in Dallas. So my he, mom lived you in get Fort to Worth. come to the D. What part? Yeah. Uh, Carrollton. Oh, that's okay. the good part. Yeah. So you yeah. went from one style of living exactly. to the next. Exactly. <laughs> so my life was always about duality. You right. know, so like with my mom, we lived in the projects. We lived Which on Section dope. 8. Which is dope. We lived on food stamps. Me like, too. I, it made you life. versatile. Well, but no, no, my, no, no, it, no. It made you strong. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was but on then food my dad, But then my dad's house, it was totally different. Like we lived in North Dallas. Like, yeah. We shopping like, at Sam's yeah, Food y'all had, Club. Y'all had, yeah. We learning how to sell candy. Like yeah. we doing all kinds of stuff. Entrepreneurship at an early age. Exactly stuff like yeah. that. But yeah. it was different. You but, know. But back to the projects you go. Yeah. yeah, I always had to go back there. Did you ever ask your dad why do we have to live over there? Why can't I live with you? Yeah, and he. Yeah, that was a big thing actually. Like that he was a told big you, question. I couldn't. You couldn't. He was like, I can't. Like I'm over here. I have another family as well. Yeah. So, you know. But as a kid, that made you feel probably like an outcast. Yeah. Like, so that's why I, I was a rebel. In, right. Am I not good enough to be over here with your other family? Exactly. We about to pull, pull up yeah. out of but, there. But go yeah. back to. I know what you're trying to Look. do. No, go back to <laughs> the reason it. why you, you say that you, um, 
as a high school kid, what mm-hmm. was the biggest thing that you did? Yeah, and it was living on my own at 15. Well, right. not, necessarily, so that was, not necessarily like living by myself, but typically I was alone. Like I was living with different people. So did and, you just tell your mom that I'm well, deuces, I'm yeah, gone? Yeah, so what happened was my mom um, was dating a guy, like my brother's dad, he was 20 years younger than my mom. So it was almost like having like a, a bigger, like an older brother in wow. the house. Mm-hmm. Wow. He wasn't mature at all. He was doing all kinds of stuff and I was the person that always seen everything. Yeah. You know, and one time I remember I came in the house and he was doing something to my mom. I'm like, yo, if you don't let my mama go, like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna it's keep. Go, yeah, it's gonna I, go I might down. just kill you. And you had yeah. two older sisters. Where were they? Yeah, so my oldest sister is actually twelve years older. Than so me. they left. Yeah, so, so they she's already gone. Left. She has her okay. own family. Yeah, so she there by herself. Exactly. And then my youngest sister, she's three years younger than me, but she was so young, she don't remember. No, no. Much. So it was me. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So did you jump on him? I wanted to, but my mom was like, no, "Of course, stop. She, yeah, yeah." And she was like, "Just leave," and I'm like, "Just leave." That's like, a, that's like baby boy. Yeah, and she was <laughs> like, "Just leave." I'm like, "For right now." She's like, "No, nah, get up out of here. Like, you need to go." And you did. And I left. Did you cry? I did. I cried a lot. That did you? It, it, just like baby boy. Just just like baby boy. Yeah, there you go. He he baby too. boy, mama. When he was like, you, like, you picked don't call me. Don't call me, me. Call me right. when he start beating on right. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you yeah, go. There you go. It was a baby boy moment for wow. real. Wow. Did, when you but, seen the movie, did you think about it? I I did. My cousin did too. Because he called me for like, man, that movie hit hit like home. I was like, damn. I remember he was going through that. home for me. Like for real, he was crazy. He was thrown off. I knew he was. I knew it got him because he's like, this is the best movie. I ever watched in my life. <laughs> said, yeah, nigga. It he brought back he was his yeah, life. That's, like, yeah, that's right. So you felt that. Mm-hmm. Wow. But with your mom dating somebody 20 years younger, because mm-hmm. was there ever a time when he tried to hit on you? No. You know, that's a question that my mom still asks me to this day. She's like, did he ever like try? Anything? I said, nah, never. If anything, it was more like violent, like violent type of things. Like, trying to discipline us and taking it too far you know something like <laughs> that be the, them be the worst ones you know but it was never nothing no. like you know okay. inappropriate or anything okay. like that I yeah. see that on, on I think it was growing up hip hop where the dude comes in I think just he, crazy. he was dating just... Peppa and he was going alright we having a family meeting but they don't know this nigga <laughs> <laughs> right it's like and who are you <laughs> they don't know him you just pull up on anything. the block <laughs> and that was me like who are you to tell me anything I got it daddy <laughs> so what did your daddy say whenever oh, she put you he out? He wasn't trying to hear that anyway. Oh, um, well, when I originally left, I went to like my godmother's house. I went to her house, and she was by herself. Mm-hmm. And um, she was cool. It was it was cool. She was by herself. She had a foreign exchange student mm-hmm. at her uh, at her house. She was from Laos. Uh, my godmother is from Puerto Rico, like straight from Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. So it was like I had that part of me too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I had so many different parts of me. Like when I was in that house. That's how I was raised. You know, like, mm-hmm. I was raised, like... But don't you know that it's only God that was molding you? No, That's for the real. dope part about it. Because I can relate to stuff. so many people. Right. It, he opened up so many avenues to give you that imagination of know how to deal with, as you said, all Adversity. Those that, right. And it was always thrown at me. It was always thrown at me. So it's just... And you like, dealt with it very yeah, well. Yeah, I just dealt with it. I didn't yeah. back down from it. I was just like, hey, this is my situation, so... Really? Let's keep it rolling. So... As you as you get older, now you you know you're a runaway, pretty yeah. much. You are I runaway. Was. So I you was just a really runaway. just shifting around town <laughs> yeah. with a bag and you're a right. stick. You know what you I'm know, talking you about? Ain't lying. Got a little gym bag. School? Did you finish high school doing so all of that? That's crazy. I actually dropped out of high school. Get a lot out of here. Don't know that. Yeah, I dropped out for three months. Wow. And I came back into school. It was one of my friends that conv- convinced me, like, "Yo, you need to get back in school. You too smart for this. You need to graduate. All that." So I ended up getting back in school, and uh, and you were living with your godmother at that time. I was, I don't know where I was. Baby, at that no, time. she was no, shifting I was, I, and moving. Yeah, I shifted. It. Oh, matter of fact, it was a family that took me in. It was a friend of mine that was on the step team. Her mom took me in. That's she, how you start liking the music. Um, it was how I started liking everything and entertainment. She I'm, taught I'm me saying, everything. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. taught me how to hustle. That's what I'm thinking. She taught mm-hmm. me like how to get in the clubs and sell a table to somebody like oh, I didn't, really? like she taught me shout all out that. to what's her name oh i call her mama mama mm-hmm. shout out to her mama you have so many okay. mamas i do you i have a lot of mamas house. so did you so when this happened mama cat. as you start getting into this okay you drop out of high school yeah, for three I dropped months out. dropped out for three months then you come back I and went you finished school. school number five of my class dope awesome 
Yo, Yo, with a 3.8 GPA. My daughter need to be here to hear this, which she makes straight A's, but let's keep going. Yeah. Uh, so so you really just went back and was like, how did you shift and get it, get it right in the yeah. midst of all this moving around? Honestly, it was my track coach. Wow. She like, she saved my life. So you did track, you did step. You Could did, you wait a minute? Stop. Dang. Yeah. I didn't let nothing stop me. What did you do in track? I ran the four by one and open hurdles. Seriously. You're so little and you did hurdles? That's oh, what yeah, I'm trying to say. Run. You know, everybody, this is not the arm. You're not going to come on here. No, you can be run. anything you want to like be that? up I in here. Run. Listen, man, really you're not going to do that up in here. You're not going to come up in here and, and be like, be all that you can be. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. you can do the hurdles and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you like. I, call, I actually uh, did. Uh, and how tall are you? Five, six. Wow. Yeah, I can really run. That was like my little escape. So my track coach was the one that was like. She seen me as a troubled teenager, and she was like, "Oh, I'm I'm saving this one for real." Like wow. she kept me like up under her. She gave me my first journal. She That's taught me God. how to do all that. Like she always kept up with me. Did she have other kids? No, she didn't have no kids. Do you That's keep up with her now? It. So I haven't been able to keep up with her because she bounces around a lot. Yeah. She's still a track coach still to this wow. day. Like she ran with Marion Jones and everything. Hmm. She went to OU. She okay. she had a big name. So like. Um, She's still doing That's her coaching. And, yeah, man. she's still doing her coaching and everything. But I ran into her not too long ago after a gig at uh, Fuel City. What did she say? And she was just like. She over there getting some tacos. She was getting some tacos. I told you I knew that what but she was doing. Her husband, and her husband was like, you're Tej, I already know who you are. Oh, wow. Wow. He knew exactly who I was and everything. He's like, she always talks about you. I mean, wow, like that's all dope. these years. So you like, know that's God. I, yeah. You know me, I'm a God man. So yeah. I, I talk about God yeah. on every situation. When it get good, it's yeah. God. My, my when it went bad, me. it was the devil. Yeah. So listen, man, that's dope. Yeah. I like it. She saved me. So I, as man. a child, in okay, so when you were in high school, yeah, what did you want to be? I didn't know. You I was know. one of those people that was confused. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I was good at a lot of things. So I had like a very artistic background. My mom always sent us to like a art school during the mm -hmm, summer. Mm -hmm. And I was the one that had like my stuff on display at the Fort Worth Art Museum and stuff like that at nine years old. Did your mom support you as you was going through all of these different things and she seen you going through it? Did she get it right somewhere in the midst of it? I can say that she was always super supportive, although she didn't always know how to show up. Yeah. You know what I'm but saying? Then but then she would do what she could. But what about her mama? How was she? Oh, very kind of. What? Standoffish? Yeah, very standoffish. Not very affectionate. That's that's what I'm trying he to tell. He's just wondering where it came I just know, yeah, I know yeah, it's that, stemming from but, something. But that's, and that's, that's the, a conversation we've had recently. Yeah, my uh, my dad was like that, and 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 not not like exactly like you were going yeah. through, but he had his issues. But I couldn't blame him after I looked at you know not knowing. Well, yeah, because his father, the way their relationship was, so you have to have some compassion mm -hmm. for the people who go through stuff too. Yeah. I think a lot of times we get angry, and angry, you know, pretty much it's expresses itself and out of control. Yeah, and our parents you know are everyday saying? people too. Exactly, like just, just people. Like us. That's exactly right. But as we get older and you know all of these things and if you're still blessed enough to have your parents or mm -hmm. your grandparents, I always say sit down and have a discussion. Yeah. Um, because a lot of us were raised where you you don't talk to your older parent. Your yeah. parents, grandparents, anybody older, you don't have those discussions. Yeah. Because you're still a child no matter how old you get. Yeah. But if you don't bring awareness to certain people, anybody older, younger, any, they don't know that what they're doing is incorrect. Right. And there's no such thing as too old to change. So that's what I, I, totally I always agree. say. Let me ask you and this. I, Let me ask her a yeah, question. Yeah. What, well, uh, far as you, you know, with your mm -hmm. mother, you know, we close knit it right now. Mm -hmm. Do you ever ask about some of the things concerning some of the things you were challenged yes. with when you was growing up? Yes, and that's the reason why I said that. It's from it's from um, experience, because like yeah. from my personal experience, it was a case, that's why I always say, no matter how much, you, when you're raising kids, mm -hmm. no matter how much you are trying to do everything you can, there's always something you're missing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because as a parent, we overcompensate for something that we were missing in our childhood. I do agree. And by doing that, you miss on something else. So um, my mom would always tell me, would always give me hugs and tell me I love you, but she would never say I'm proud of you. So that's something wow. I was missing. I felt like, you know, it's three of us. I'm mm. the only girl, but you never said, all the things I've done, you never turned to me and say, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of what you mm. did. Mm -hmm. You accomplished, you know? So, so always, as I got know, older. that was my dad for me. Yeah. But my yeah. dad was the He never did that. Oh, he was the oh, affectionate. affectionate one. My dad's of the course, affectionate Of course, you're the one. He's baby girl. But yeah. what, when you think about it, you know, we can find excuses at all mm -hmm. times on things that parents didn't do. But you have to bring it up because yeah. if no, you bring awareness, then 
they can correct and, and start agree, to say something. I agree with yeah. I agree with that. If you get the opportunity to bring right. it up, bring it up. Yeah. But also you gotta like my dad, he wasn't affecting. I told you he never hugged me till mm-hmm. I graduated high school. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, he taught me how to work. He taught me how to be a man. You know what I'm saying? He taught me how to mm-hmm. he instilled that work ethic in me. So if I look at it and scale it, it, it certain things I didn't get, but certain things I got too much of because mm-hmm. of the way right. he was raised. I mm-hmm. feel it. So you and got. I feel like, yeah, that's, you see it. You yeah. see it in both of your parents and what mm-hmm. they went through. So why blame them for something? When you get older, you learn to forgive, right? That's crazy because it's like it's like when you get older, you know, it is in a certain age, and you got that type of knowledge. It's like you start to reparent your parents. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You know, like yeah. my parents you, come you, to it's me. It's so true. It's so mm-hmm. true. They come to me all the time. They're like, so like. I'm helping them figure out things yeah. with themselves. They said yeah. once a man, twice a child. Yeah. So that's and really like helping what it them is. unpack some things that's that like dope. I've already addressed. Does, how does myself. it make you feel? I'm just like wow, like they they really look like in a sense look up to me in a sense. Mm-hmm. Like my mom, like you understand this, you understand that. I don't get it. Like help me understand. Beautiful. Like I was telling her, like you need you got some shadow work to do. You need to work on some things from the past. And she's like, how do I do that? Wow. I was like you got to open your heart to refill those feelings. Wow. But for me, it was God. Mm-hmm. That's the only way. I, I mean, you have to read and research for me. Yeah. For me, I don't push what I do on everybody else. But yeah. for me, I have to open up the word. I have to, you know, put things in me mm-hmm. that pretty much builds integrity and right. makes morals. I can't just go by, oh, I'm going to do it. You know, no, right, right. I got to read. I got to figure this thing out. I got to pray. I got to have yeah. a relationship with God. I got to pray with my wife. Mm-hmm. I got to pray with my kids. Yeah. That's the way I enforce the That's the way I get it. Yeah. I, and go back to what you said. I, um, you don't blame them for anything Mm-mm. that they do. You still forgive, mm-hmm. but it's just that in order for you to correct certain things, because we all supposed to strive to improve our right, life. Right. In, or, in order for us to know that we do anything incorrect, right. the way how we say things, because everybody have communication problems. Nobody yeah, has for real. Nobody's perfect, perfect communication. That, yeah. So in order for that to be fixed, somebody has to bring something to your awareness to say, this is how you say things. I perceived it like this, that, right. uh, whatever. And then you're like, oh, you know what? But Maybe next time I'll say, try to say it in a different but way. But I'll say exactly. this, though. Even when you do that, um, it's like planting a seed. You don't know when it's going to grow. It doesn't happen you don't know, it you don't know when it's going to grow. Exactly. It's up to God when it happens. Right. You're right. So you just can, even if it's your parents, even if it's your friend, you it's still the same rules apply. Mm-hmm. You're just planting a seed. Mm-hmm. You're telling somebody something that can help them. But don't you go getting mad or discouraged when they don't change right. when you want exactly. them to. Mm-hmm. Because it's up to God when that change happens. But Definitely. the problem is a lot of people take on other people's issues as their assignment. There you go. And they feel like it's that's their assignment, you know, to help someone heal. You know what I'm saying? But like mm-hmm. you say, you're supposed to plant the seed and keep it moving. You but know? Yeah, yeah. And dust your feet if you have to. Right. Yeah. yeah all you, that apply. You All that energy, you ha- you hold on to all That's that. right. Yeah. You know so cause, and it affects you. And that's dope because now you, when you do that, it, everything that God shows me, it's like he's showing you a way not only to help and affect others, but to help yourself as yeah. well while you're doing it. Yeah. So sure. all that stuff is going all that at the same time. Energy. At the same time. But people don't understand that though, because like I, I, I learned how to be ver- um, vocal now when I say certain things. So a lot of times when I'm telling somebody advice or something, or I'm telling them um, something, my personal, you know, experiences, mm-hmm. what I've been through, and I'm looking for that to help them. And I said, the reason why I say all of this, I'm not just saying it for you. I'm saying it for me because the more I say certain things, it reiterated in my mind and keeps me on the straight and narrow. So I tell everybody, don't ever be ashamed of anything you went through. Spread the word. Tell everybody because you don't know who you're helping. You never know. And it's not your job to know that you're helping the person. Yeah. Plant the seed like what you say and just don't worry about it. Yeah. Just leave it to God and know that it will work itself out. For sure. And then... A lot of times, also, I was just thinking about David for some reason when he was talking. A lot of times, God let your, you know, let your lifestyle be an example to others. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you, you may not tell nobody your testimony. I don't remember him doing that, but crying out to God a lot. And he was a man after God's own heart, according yeah. to what I read. So, but his lifestyle and the things he'd done is what made him so courageous. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Living in your authenticity. There you go. So... so when did you figure out you wanted to be in the radio industry? 
Boy, here we go. You just going to skip over college. Wait a minute. That's I don't want to go there. Oh, 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 no, oh, no, oh yeah. We're going back to college. Oh, no. no, no, no that's no, what we want to talk no. about. I want to know about Paris. So how, did yeah. you, how did you get wait, into wait Paris? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You going to take my everything. <laughs> you know, you a trip. But lately, she I should have. When on. I first started dealing with you, you wouldn't even talk hard. She now, said that you she just has questions. The whole <laughs> when I'm about to ask you, let me get that one too and throw it over there. You know, go ahead. You want me to just check it out? I'll sit back and check it, man. Go ahead. So when did you? <laughs> <laughs> so 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 how did you end up going? At, what year? Who went? All that. Right. Because this was a whole movement down no, there. Man, Prairie View was a whole mo- Prairie View. Yes, was a whole movement. It yeah, really you was. niggas. Was I, got, I got there in two thousand six. Yeah, yeah. So that's when things was like kind of like, oh, yeah. what's going on out here? Midday parties yeah. on Wednesday. What? We skip class, <laughs> cut class, classic. We wow. cut in class and we. In the yard party. So did you get a scholarship? So I did. I actually got a scholarship due to my academics, being number five in my class. Wow. Yeah, I never, like, really talked about it, but I had a scholarship going there. They offered me a partial track scholarship because I was originally going to go to OU. Okay. And at last minute, I was just like... So glad you didn't. I was just like, it just didn't resonate for me. And I chose Prairie View without ever seeing the school. Beautiful. So what was was it about Prairie View that why you chose that? Well, I went to Dunbar. So, you know... All band. your friends were gone. All my friends from band were going to mm-hmm. Prairie, Prairie View. And then you always hear about it. You always see it. We went to the games at the fair. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, that's where I'm going. Wow. I remember pulling up and I'm like, this is where I'm going. Oh, this <laughs> man. Hold up. Right. You like, man. You know, Williams Chicken on the corner, you know. And it ain't nothing else but man. Country Road and That's school. all right. That's like, all right. You kicked it. And my dad was like, all right, this is where you go. Oh, he went with you down there. Yeah, my dad. Oh, me dope. and my dad went together for orientation. i would never seen the school until orientation. Oh, really? Yeah. And so, so I, I went to orientation. What, 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 what was your first, like, um, you know, um, what was your first thoughts the first month that you was there? What did you feel? Can you remember? I can go all the way back to the first day. Oh, yeah, like, I'm right. saying, how was I it? I remember we were moving in. I wasn't even sad. I was like, ooh, I am ready. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to have, have, have some fun. Uh, we were going to have some fun. So it was crazy. The, our move-in day, there was a whole, like, yard party, like, right <laughs> was while, that on we were, while we were moving in Paris. What day was it? It was... It was a Saturday. Okay, Everybody yeah, had to move oh, in yeah, on a jumping, Saturday. They jumping. On and there's Saturday. a party. There was a party moving in. So I would have like, told I'd have pulled my child to the side and said, You better not be up here party. You better get them school. See, my daddy in. cool. He cool like, with you it. So he was like, like okay. you be jumping. <laughs> yeah, for you know, real. You did the right it thing. It was a whole barbecue, everything, like a welcome, freshman welcome party in the yard. I was like, Oh, this is what it's about to be. I knew it was setting the tone. Wow. But what was crazy, though, was I was so, like, I got myself in the school. Like, my parents didn't help me. They didn't want to sign off on fast food. They didn't want to do none of that. Although I had lived other places, I was like, can y'all just sign off on this? They would not. Why? And all they had to do is sign. They wouldn't do it. They didn't want, I don't want it on my credit. I don't want, <laughs> right. But it was a scholarship. But, you know, like, when you, oh, you, you have to, when yeah, get loans yeah, and stuff first. like that, they didn't yeah. want that in their name. So I was like, How'd you do it? I'm going to figure it out. I, I applied for all these scholarships. I had so much free money coming in. Wow. Teachers I, helped you? I never really, no, nah, I did it myself. Mm. I just did research. I never really had to come out of pocket for anything. That's Look good. at God. That's But God. you see, if they didn't sign, if they had signed, that wouldn't have even happen. Right. Right. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, so I had scholarships from all, just random scholarships from all different places that paid for my school. I may have took out 10000 the whole time I was there. And that's did, nothing. Okay, is this where you found your love for the music? We, he, yeah, he, he keeps like, trying, okay, okay, trying yeah. to so figure it out. P- PV was... <laughs> you uh, already loved the music before. Yeah, I, I already, always loved music. Yeah. My daddy is a big, like, big-time uh, vinyl collector. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, He's always listened to music, like, so blasting. You know, yeah. he always had his little sports car blasting music, and yeah. that was, like, always our thing. Um. And then I played instruments in middle school, of course. all the way up until high school. Okay. But then PV, it was just like a breeding ground for music. I met so many people that but like was who? Like, yeah, name them. Well, Darrell, I don't believe look, you. I would be with I don't Cash, Darrell, yeah, and name all, all of them. them. Who I would them? Be the going, prime time click. The prime time click. I would be in the, what those kind of guys, car was those it? Those guys was kind of rowdy. It was an expedition, something. We would be in that expedition. I remember one time we went to Texas A&M, Darrell performed and everything, and I'm just there like, had no clue what I was actually like doing there, 
But I was like with the crew. Like, wow. You know, so I've you really you're do, one you, of the guys. Minute, do you got prime time clip uh, uh, tattooed on your back? Your back. <laughs> that's what yeah, TJ had TJ it on his back. Had, uh, I said, TJ, uh, take uh, your damn shirt TJ off. TJ had it on his back. <laughs> he Shut showed it to up. me. I was like, damn, you you did it. Shut up. No. <laughs> But I was like always cool with like all the DJs, all the upcoming artists. I was just one Can of those. Can you dance? So were you like a dancer or something? No, nah, nah, she's I was just, just cool. I felt like I was always like one of those people one that could put the pieces together. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Connect people. That that that's what I felt like I always was. I was a promoter at a very young age. Mm. I had a fake ID when I was 15 years old. It's I used good. to. I used good to, stuff. I used to be a promoter at Therapy Lounge in Deep Ellum back in the day. <laughs> I think that was a thing back in the day. I think almost everybody yeah. had a fake ID. Well, uh, you nowadays, can get them right down there by the police station. Station down there by Loose Stairs. You can get you a <laughs> fake ID. You can no, get on that brooding. Yeah, all them places. I was getting Look, mine early on. I was I had, every bit of 16, but I was 27. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> kicking it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get you that fake ID. Yeah, I had so, a fake ID. And I was promoting and, you know, selling tables and doing all that. So I was always one of those people that. You was one of the people that Bone was talking about on here. Because Bone what? said, Bone, no, Bone. <laughs> Say, I'm done. He said that prime time click. He don't know how they was doing what they was doing, <laughs> but he say seemed like they was everywhere he wanted to be. Yo, like, like, like he was like that must be me. You know, like for song like, came out. I even had friends that like play instruments. Like they were just creative beings. Like behind the scenes I was like automatically drawn to these people. So it wow. wasn't like nothing that was really forced. Like I had a friend that like literally would write music and play guitar and she could play keyboard and, wow. but she didn't do anything with, with it but it. it was like I was always attracted to like the creative That's you know dope. what I'm saying yeah. so it kind of just molded like I say my tribe and it wow. gave it really gave me the confidence to do what I'm doing now yeah. today just being around them seeing people do different things it taught me how to go after it like go get it so what do you do actually let, let's let, let me ask I do you. I do a lot of things so I started out uh, <laughs> but no I uh, I started out as a model and an actress so I did that for many many years really? I was signed to Kim Dawson's agency really at 18 months and That's I started a good agency yeah I started in entertainment at such a young age so it was just in me like I couldn't wow. get away from it cause that's the thing I was wondering cause when you were jumping from house to house yeah you didn't have a part time job or doing yeah, anything like that yeah I always like worked that. I always yeah, had a worked. job she know how to get to yeah, it yeah I always had a job my first job was that's um, what make you dope because at the Arlington Ballpark Oh, that was your first job? Mm -hmm. I used to make I used Ooh. to make the baseball bats. Dang, that's, that's networking crazy. right there. Oh, I met so many people there. Like mm -hmm. still to this day I can walk in restaurants. I'm like, yo, and like they owning stuff now. Like the people that yeah, was yeah, working yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's crazy how everything came full circle, but I did that, worked at finish line, yeah. worked at YMCA. Story so dope. I just I like the hair. Fifteen years <laughs> old, getting to it. Oh, I did all kind of stuff. I, I, I love. I it. think everybody in college, if you're black, everybody braided hair at some point. Oh, in college, I had college. three jobs then. I know. Like I, I had a full schedule. Still had three jobs. I was working and partied like, at the same time. Okay, I did it all. <laughs> you really a part of the reason why the prime time click you <laughs> made it. There you go. Let's go and get. We we'll just jump all yeah, the way out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm so glad that shit came We'll just jump all the way out there. I am so yeah. glad. Promotion all that. and all that. I see what's going on now. I because the road, you came on here. You didn't. You didn't tell me everything. I <laughs> no, but what I'm glad about is the fact that when you all always talked about a primetime click, it was always all these males. You yeah. never used yeah. to hear about any females. Was so she I'm here so now? Happy. Yeah, I was like, it was so funny. I ran for, what was it, Homecoming Queen or something yeah. like that at Prairie View. I actually recorded, my, I rec I decided to do like a little mixtape, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, y'all, I'm going to get in the booth. I'm about to rap a little bit. <laughs> who, who wrote that rap? Some, I think it was Mike. I think it was Mike. And then our friend, um, Jorge, George. George, yeah, we all linked up. And we were recording in that closet. And I made a song called Vote for Tasia, September 18th. Hey. Had the whole hey. campus saying this every time mm. they see me. And yeah, so I was always, you know, with the crew, just kicking it. I was always kind of like in the shadows. I yeah. never really was like that person like at the forefront yeah. I just kind of kicked it and chilled I was cool with everybody how many other females were around I don't think there was anybody around it would probably be randoms okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to say, say it will probably be like random people but wow. like when it came to like like having like real friends like those were the homies wow okay you know what I'm saying I love so, it man so I was cool with a lot of people though so you are over you're a part of K104 yeah I'm a part of K104 so how, how long have you been there 
I've been there for three years now. Three years yeah. now. So two years into me actually teaching myself how to DJ. I wow. got assigned to radio. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got discovered. You taught yourself how to DJ. Yeah, I taught myself. So where did no, you play during that time? No, somebody had to play time? part in that. Nobody. Nobody taught me how to DJ. So, so come what on, were, are you serious? No, serious. What was the you biggest did? gig I, okay, you so got during that time? Stop for a minute. Stop, so, look, stop, I had stop. a friend's house. She was a, like a DJ a couple years back. And okay. I used to go to her house to use her equipment just to teach myself in between my jobs. Okay. And she would just tell me like, oh, that sounds good. Or this and this and that. But nobody physically taught me how to DJ. No. Really? I like that. Mm-mm. So, so you self-taught? What, self-taught. Ah, what was the biggest it. gig yeah. you got during that time when you was DJing? Um, what, what time? Like at the beginning? Phases? At the beginning phases. Oh, I DJ with Manny Fresh. What? For for um yeah and that was before for the fat, radio for Fat Tuesday no it was I got I'm talking within that two years you said you did before you got signed oh to before the radio. I got signed to radio okay that was my first big gig though like with That's radio dope, was with Manny Fresh. Mm-hmm. Um, Manny Fresh we did Fat Tuesdays at House of Blues I'm wow. gonna ask him one day yeah Don't it was trip. dope it was I dope you I'm I got pictures videos I ain't tripping mm-hmm. I'm gonna ask him. okay I'm gonna find it nigga. okay. <laughs> Yeah, KLC was on here already. I'm, I'm close. I'm close. I'm done. KLC was already on here with Beats by the Pound. Shut up. Yeah, I rock with these folks. I'm going to find that nigga. It's coming. Shut up. Oh, no, it's coming. Him. I'm going to ask that nigga what you. <laughs> you so, funny. So I know it's real. Like, I, I need to know from okay. him. From, mm-hmm. I want to get it from the horse's mouth. At House of Blues, <laughs> okay. Fat Tuesday. I'm not going to forget. You okay. don't have to worry about All that. All right now. So but I'm trying to figure out how okay, did you yeah. get signed to that? That's why okay, I'm asking so, about the big gig. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that I had like big gigs, but I'm also very hard on myself. So asking me that, it's just like, was it really that big? You know, there but you go. I did different events with like Victoria's Secret, you know, stuff like That's that. Big. Um, Makeup mm-hmm. Forever. I did gigs at North Park and stuff like that. Um, but I actually had got really, I wouldn't say I got cool because I was always cool with a lot, everybody in, in Dallas, although I'm not from Dallas, I was cool mm-hmm. with everybody, you know? And from being a promoter once, I just reached out to the promoter homies and I was like, yo, I'm DJing now. Everybody's like, girl, get out of here. Like, Tasia, no, you not. Wouldn't even pay attention to me. But it was one group, uh, co-op, they actually, I sent them over like a little mix that I did and they listened to it while they was just, you know, chilling. They was like, this you? Like, wow. you did this? And I was like, yeah, I've been, I told y'all I've been DJing. They was like, shoot, when you ready to DJ then? I'm like, oh, no, I ain't ready yet. But I really was. I was just, I was so afraid. Nervous. I was so nervous. So I waited a whole year <laughs> while I was teaching myself, and they actually gave me my first opportunity to take on a residency. Wow. So from there, I just, I just grew from there. I was all over the place. I was in all of the nightclubs all of the bars, like all of the major parties and stuff like that, but they gave me my opportunity. And that's how the radio saw you. That's how the radio saw me. That's what I was uh, trying to figure out. Yeah. Like, how did how did yeah, that opportunity got, open um, up? You know the spot over there off of Ross called uh, The Ranch? The it's Ranch. called XOXO now. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, what? that's where I was discovered. Wow, that's mm. dope. On a man. random. And who discovered you? DJ Steve Nice. That's what's up. Oh. Man. So on a random, I think it was like a Wednesday or something like that. Nobody was in there. So you was working. I, I was working. That's was what matters. It, and he was just like, "How did you feel when he came came to I you with that like, opportunity?" Me? Like, am I ready for this? No, 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 no. You God know, I second guessed myself. Yeah, I know like, you did. I'm new. Like, you should have like just I been like, so "I'm new. from the prime time click." Uh, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> This nigga don't know what he I just done. I'm done. gonna take this thing over. I yeah. am done. You know, like, I'm the first lady of the prime time. Yeah. Not the first lady. <laughs> the first lady. Yeah. I am now we can get it started done. over there. I'm yeah. done with y'all. So, not the first lady. So you, uh, Bill Bellamy's co- cousin? Yeah, that's my cousin. Wow. Yeah. How, do you? I mean, you talk to him often? I actually do talk to him. Like whenever he comes in Dallas, let that he, nigga know. He lets me know. This nigga. <laughs> <laughs> let him know. <laughs> Like, boss talk is a thing <laughs> you know what I'm talking about just let them know boss yes. talk is a thing right? that would be kind of that would be kind of dope no, I'm, uh, hey, I'm working with a lot of people you better try to hey you better get in before I blow up <laughs> okay tell them get it while it's hot okay <laughs> no, so what you I, think about what you think a about a platform I love it I love really? like that it's um, it's it's real it's genuine it's all. authentic it's just having conversation it doesn't feel forced it doesn't no. feel like you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I've been on plenty of podcasts, but it feels like it's so, like, it's so to the point. You know, it's not, like, where it allows the conversation to just wander and just yeah. go free. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And I'm a talker, so, mm-hmm. like, I, I can yeah. talk. I don't want to be put in the box where yeah. it's like, 
This question. But yeah. you question. miss so much good because one thing I've realized by doing it the way how we do it. Yeah. We hear some stories that have <laughs> never been told. I know you'd be like, what? Yeah. No, but and I, mean, then, I know And then God, the funny right? thing is that some people will call us back afterwards and say, I don't know how y'all got that out of me. Or oh, don't put that part in there. Yeah, for real? Hell yeah, because don't put that part in there. I don't know what, what I, I, came I'm over real, me. I'm real with it and I'm true to it. Like, yeah, for real. Like, no, I am who I am. Yeah, I've heard. I've had some people, but because they was like, this is about to happen big for me and I don't want to put that out yet. Don't no, put it out yet. Yeah, uh, because stuff like that. because sometimes you can pull I want to write a book out of somebody. Right. Like you. And they don't know in that moment. When we do it, it's not like we know what we're pulling out. Right, It just comes out. And I feel that. God gives us the spirit of I want to make people feel comfortable, welcome, yeah, to yeah. feel like they're a part of the family. Well, right? you, you know really I mean? is welcome, and if yes, you're I not, mean, I we have welcome. had somebody that was kind of in, you know, tightened up, and I didn't put the video out, but it was they was depressed, and I knew it, Ooh, and, I, and I didn't want to put it out, but. At some point, I'm gonna drop it. Mm -hmm. but, you should, but because that's somebody in real time. I think I think it would do him. He probably was waiting on it. I don't know, you but it just know. seemed like he was going through a lot. Remember that? Mm -hmm. You know exactly. But it what might. I'm I know about. what you're talking about. But you never know by putting it out too. It might make certain people reach out to him to you know. Yeah. Help. Shout out sure. to Young Jock. You know what? I'm done. He's going down. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm tripping. I'm done. No, no, just, young you know, yeah, yeah. It was some things but that went on. He, he was it's involved in, though. He was I mean, involved in. Shout out to Young Jock. Holla at me. I'm at Boss Talk 101. We will be back down there in three months. Yep. <laughs> so, well, so, so, we just went to Atlanta. We yeah. just started traveling. Okay. I lived there for a while. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we kicked it down. And her brother lives there. How so do I you say, like it? I, I I do like it. I actually okay. miss it a lot. What? Um, you in do. Dallas. You need to calm no, down. No, I do. I miss it a lot because it taught me so much about entrepreneurship. How long did you live there for? I stayed there for two and a half years. What and made I, you come back? And what made you go there in the first What place? made me go there was chasing a dream. Okay. I, I wanted to take a leap of faith. And I felt like, yo, I've been here for so long. Like, If I need to come back, I can come back. Mm -hmm. So I, I left and I had a vision. How old were you? This is after college. Yeah, this is after college. I was uh, 25 okay. when I went to Atlanta. This was before the DJ. This was before right. DJ. That's right. why God had something he wanted to do with yeah, you. Yeah, this this was way before yeah, DJing yeah. was even mm -hmm. a thought. Um, I had went out there. I was like, I'm going to just move. Like, I'm yeah. going to just take a leap of faith. I knew I wanted to get into acting. I knew that I wanted to be on the game. Like, I knew everything that I wanted to do. I wrote it down. A month after living there, I got signed with BT, and I was on the game. I worked on there all the way until they closed it out. I did, worked with Brandy. Did Bill help you get that job? No. My you cousin won't help me get no job. What? He was like, I want to see you do it for yourself. He saw me that before. Wow, I like it. And I was like, on some respect, like, I, I'm cool with it. You, know? you should be proud of He's like, build you. yourself up. I don't, that's why a lot of people don't even know my last name. I don't use my last name on purpose. Your last mm -hmm. name Bellamy? My last name is Bellamy. Damn. So this is your daddy's brother. Well, he is a third cousin. Okay. Uh, with our family that's like on the East Coast. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they've talked about it before. I don't know the exact, you know. Yeah, but you know, that's okay. We'll get him when we get him but, right now. We wrote. Yeah, him. my last name is. You have Bellamy. done a great job with your career. You're so mm -hmm. special and you're talented. And uh, yeah, you from the prime time clip before <laughs> that. Yeah, that's what we want to keep on so saying. Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the part I want everybody <laughs> I to get. Am yeah, Dallas stand up. She from the prime time clip. Oh my so, god! But how did it feel? How did it feel when you got that position with BT? Um, I was just like, whoa, like I. But that's a big deal. Yeah, I dreamed of it. Did like, you know what's the really woman name? Who? The one they always talk about in reality TV. What's her name? The one that, what's her name? Mona Scott? Mona Scott. Yeah. Yeah. You knew her. I never met Mona Scott. Okay. I, feel, I, I'm just, I just met, the, I, I hear her who, name knew, a lot. Like, uh, you probably know Selima Kill. Yeah. Mara Brock Kill. They okay. did Girlfriends and yeah, all of that. Yeah, yeah. I know them, like, first That's what's up. Yeah, so I Man. worked with them. They were the producers of the game. But you look like you could do that stuff. Thank you. Man, I, I loved it. Yeah, I, I, I could tell. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. There's more, there were so much opportunity like so that much. there. So why move back here and not just yeah. jump to another show? Man, yeah, so it was crazy. I went through um, a pretty bad breakup. And a that, lot nigga, of, that nigga hurt you. And a, and a lot of life changes. And so I was like, you know what? Let me go How back. How long were y'all together for? Um... Two years. So I was there for two and a half years. So, yeah, two yeah, years. He missed out on something special. And you just wanted to just get away better from him. Better believe it. Out on better, better nigga, that nigga come to Dallas. He know you know he knows it. Oh, God. <laughs> I messed up. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God. 
<laughs> but yeah, um, so I was like, you know, I'm gonna come back home. I came back home and I was actually homeless. A lot of people didn't know that. What? I was homeless. I came back homeless. What did What did you say? And you have time click no, but hold up. on, but hold Wait on. Wait a minute. Yeah. You the type of person that you all you have people you could stay with. Yeah. You have people that you okay, can. I feel but that. you just right. like I don't want to deal with nobody. I don't want to. Right. I can I, feel that from yeah, you. Yeah, I am like that. Like, let me just get it because I don't want to owe nobody. Well, let me ask you this, homeless woman. Where what did you? Uh, where uh, did you I stay? ain't homeless no more. Where okay. did you stay when you was homeless? Uh, I actually stayed in my car for a while. That's dope. When you said for a while, two days, three uh, days. a couple weeks. Two it was, weeks. It was, a, it was a good like three, four weeks. All the great stay in the car. Yeah. You I, in a good class. Look, look, <laughs> I, look, I used to find, I look, I used to find all like safe them. places I could park. Yeah. You know, to sleep yeah, at night. All the like, <laughs> you, I don't all know why you find great. safe places. I would park in in apartment parking lots. Yeah. You didn't watch Mr. Deeds. <laughs> 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 You remember that? Nah, for real. Like, yeah, it gets real. Yeah. But you have somebody come yeah. and knock and be like, hey. Yeah, they do. And so hopefully I, I slept, it's a millionaire. I, I slept in my car for a while. I stayed with friends. I was couch surfing. You know, wow. I was staying in hotels. And I everything. like it, Did man. you get a, what was the job that you got? So what's you got crazy back? was when I got back, I was like, yo, because I did like a lot of assistant sty styling when I was in Atlanta. So I was like, when I come here, I'm going to just style. So I did a Southern Dallas magazine. Wow. And that was my first gig when I got back. So I was like, I'm a stylist. You know what wow. I'm saying? I just came yeah, out you as owned that. It. Yeah. So I started doing that, and I was styling people. A lot of people didn't know about that. And then I just started getting random jobs. I was a manager at UPS. I was a manager at a hair store. Which one? The one off Samuel? <laughs> the one in Fort Worth. Oh, yeah, because I was <laughs> off Samuel, man. Yeah. So you yeah. were staying in, went back no, to Fort Worth? No, no, I was actually staying in Arlington at the time. Okay. So I had a job in Fort Worth, and I had two jobs in Dallas. That's mm. what's up. So I would go back and forth, back and forth. UPS would be at the end of the day. You know what wow. I'm saying? So I had the two jobs. You don't have no kids. No, no kids. Yeah, but you. what kind yeah. of car was that you were sleeping in? Oh, what car did what? I have? Oh, I had a white Honda. Yeah, yeah. That I thing, sure did. You could let the seat all the way back. All the way. That's what I'm talking about, <laughs> Look, man. no automatic seat. You better let it down <laughs> you yourself. So where did you go and take a shower? Uh, hotels, fr station. friends' house, like yeah, friends' okay. house and stuff like that. Like a lot of times, like I say, I was couch surfing. I was going to different people's house. No, but I'm talking when you were friend. living in your car for those two weeks. Oh yeah, where did you go? The gym. The gym. Gas station. Yeah, I had a like I had a gym membership. I would station. go to the gym. Okay. Yeah, it's hard when you're homeless. You know, mm -hmm. I know you can't exp understand. Well, because when I think about somebody homeless, I'm thinking about you can't even afford a gym no, membership. No, no, no. They got a, she so got you, a car. Yeah, you, you know, like. There's levels of homelessness. There is some levels <laughs> yeah, to this. Levels, you know, you see people in LA, they be living in tents and got a cell phone at the same right. time. <laughs> <laughs> With a double apartment, got a two bedroom right. tent. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 it go down. You know, I they can only video. afford. You know, they can only afford. What they got? Yeah, yeah that. It's and all then good. you know when it comes to housing, they, they ain't got it. Can't get I mean, I wasn't house. homeless for very long. It was about two months. Two months. Yeah, but then I got right back to it. Yeah, because I left so abrupt. You know, I just left. Yeah, mm -hmm. we ain't talking about me, but I went through a spell too. Yeah. But I was robbing. Yeah, yeah. you was yeah. robbing. Yeah, I was robbing. Yeah. Young, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. I wasn't fit to be. I was homeless, but I did, couldn't tell because I was too busy breaking in houses and stuff. And just. I, do <laughs> I'm done. Well, I was in everybody else's house. I didn't He's feel like, homeless. Oh, we're going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> going to be all right. No, I, doing... you, you do go through things when you're young. And and that's the part about growing up, right? That's mm -hmm. so so dope, right? Yeah. Because you can look back on the things that you went through. Somebody else that's homeless that moving from house to house may see this video. Yeah. And they be like, uh, oh, this podcasting. Or hear it on Apple Podcasting. Yeah. And, and, and next thing you know, they uh, find a way out of this situation because of you. I yeah, say. I'm I being real. It. That's yeah. what it's. That's what it's right. all like, about. Like I'm not ashamed of where I came. No, from. I love it. That you know, what I'm saying a lot of people don't want to share their story because they haven't really dealt with themselves. They haven't really faced themselves. They haven't looked at themselves in the mirror. So to be accepting of your life that you lived, you have to really face yourself. And a lot of people run from themselves. Wow. That's true. And I always say your story is a testimony. Yeah. For somebody else to help somebody else. Yeah. It's not for yourself. Yeah. For real. It's for somebody else. But I love the fact that you've been. Because when I think about BET working over there and yeah. all that, you up here. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then and down then, here. Yeah. And a lot of people who come all the way down be like, yeah. yeah. 
trying to hide. Uh-huh. Don't want nobody to know that this is where they yeah, ended I up. Yeah, I didn't hide nothing. But your story is dope. You could be Thank a you. co-host at Boss Talk 101. <laughs> Look, okay, just invite me yeah, back. You know, I'll be every, here. Yeah, every time. I'll be we, here. Because that backstory is what makes the thing work. Yeah. And that's yeah, what yeah. people don't realize. It's pretty you know? crazy. Yeah, yeah. If I start telling you mine, you might not come back. Sure. Know? Yeah, I'm, I'm one of them type dudes. <laughs> I'm but, done. But, but so, who, who have you met that when you met them, it was a star-studded moment? Ooh, you know, um, like, Kanye West. I wish you I could meet that nigga. Him. Stop, man. Yeah, I met Kanye West in Atlanta. Oh, how did it go? Tell me about it. Was dope. That. Look, at, look at people say, like, like we ended me. up, yeah. we ended up like chopping it up in the back, uh, cause um, we were back there for some reason. But I'm, I'm really cool with like a lot of the people from Rock Nation and stuff like that. that yeah. work with Rock Nation. Yeah. So when I started talking about Jay Z, you fell some type of way. Yeah, but you couldn't do nothing about it because we had to No, no, no. So we were back there in the back, and Kanye, he was just chilling or doing something. I can't remember, but. I was like, I went up to him and I was like, yo, can I just take it? He's like, of course, come on, like, take a picture with me. Everybody's oh, like, wow. how is he so cool with you? Cool with you. And he smiled in the picture and everything. It was like, he don't be smiling. No, you God, know? God gave you faith. And it's it was, the vibe. Yeah, the it was vibe. one of them things. It was just like, a, it was a moment that was just so cool. And we all went back there and drank Duce and, and kicked you know, it. did all the things. So that was like, kicked it. yeah, that was one of the. Um, highlight moments. Yeah, highlight moments. In but of life. course, working with Brandy was like so You dope. work with Brandy? On the game, yeah. Yeah, you, you met. She was uh, you met Ray movie. J. Did you? You I met didn't Ray, Ray, Ray J. Look, Ray That's J. Never got I love Ray J. Ray J. <laughs> <laughs> I love Ray J. You know, uh, okay. Brandon, I just skated right past. I so you... love Ray J. But no, Brandy was a, an amazing. She person. seemed real cool. She was an amazing person to work with. She used to always pull me aside, and she'd be like, "You don't belong behind the camera." Like, really? Oh, all the time. She'd be like, "You belong in front of the camera." She's like, "I don't know what you gonna do." She's like, "But you don't belong behind. You gonna have to come in the forefront." She's really? always telling me that. Yeah. She's like, "You don't belong behind the scenes. Wow. You belong in front of the camera." So she's she easy to work with. Very easy to work wow. with. So cool. Just that's why she always getting gigs. No, seriously. That's why she stays booked. Exactly. Really? Amazing soul. Yeah, amazing soul. Like, for real. So, yeah, them the two that But really that's something stick. that sticks them with me, too. Like, like, right. Her telling me that. But that's that why moment. it's very pivotal for us to touch other people's life. Even if it's just a sentence you say to yeah. somebody, something positive. Yeah. It stays with them forever. You just don't know because yeah. she doesn't know until she listens to Boss Talk 101 Look, to know. Okay. Hey. Look, Brandy, we're going to send this over to you. Hey, wait, wait. <laughs> See what I mean? Then I'll let my boy for me, but Ray J, you know, we're we going to fan out right quick. Okay. <laughs> so, um, top three artists of no, all time. I want to ask one. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Top three artists of all any time. Genre. Dead any or genre. Dead or Any genre. genre. Top know how three hard artists. It is? Not everybody everybody's been on the show and done, done it, so let's go. Male or female, anybody? Ooh. And you can put Bob Marley in it. That's cool. What? Okay, I, you know what? You better not put. I love me some Bob. Okay? <laughs> I do love me some Bob. Okay, top yeah, artist. Yeah, so let's go. Damn, Come on. that's so Number hard. Number one. I'm gonna go with Prince. Okay. Twenty seven instrument playing Prince. Oh, let's I go. Love Turn up. Number I two. Love Prince. Prince. I said, um, I could have picked that. I know you look like a parent's fan. I friend. love Prince. You look like one. I, I could have told you that before you even picked. I used to, I used to lie over, to everybody. Like, over. Prince, my daddy, y'all. <laughs> you, you know what you and that you nigga comment for? You love Prince <laughs> That nigga might be. I everybody like, Prince, my daddy. Everybody like, Tasha, shut up. <laughs> like, Prince ain't your daddy. Okay, number two. Uh, Number two, I definitely got to go with Kanye West. I'm a definitely. That's okay. dope. I'm I like, a, I like I'm a Kanye, Kanye West fan. Yeah, me too. For sure. Me too. And especially after meeting him, right? No, yeah. I'm a Kanye fan. Well, even before that. Like all layers, all layers of Kanye is I'm I'm down with. Yo, it. in high school, like Everything. when I used to say, you know, at these different people's house, I play that college dropout record so much they'd be Ooh. like, shut up, like they just turn <laughs> it off. I'll be listening to spaceships over and over and over and over. <laughs> They're like, Tasia, turn this off. I'm tired of listening to That's it. So dope. definitely Kanye West for sure. Kanye number West three. number two. Oh, number three. You know, everybody normally goes with Beyonce, but I have a very favorite artist of all time, Amy Winehouse. Amy I like, Winehouse. I like her. She like her. I yeah. like her. I love her. So have you ever heard of her a bad, best friend a... named Julia Ashby? Mm-mm. So she actually has like a reggae sound. You need to look her up. Her name is Julia, Julia Ashby. Ashby. Okay. And she I'm actually gonna, recorded gonna... in a lot of the studios that Bob Marley recorded. How much in. music huh? you got in that head of yours? Ooh, it's too it's much. It's a lot. It's a lot. I listen to all types of things. Like I know. Bar, I can like believe that. My favorite. Me too. Which one you like, girl? Oh, um. Did you listen to him when he was with that first group? 
What? Sw- switch? Wasn't it, it Switch? No, my it? daddy has those records. Though. Yeah, yeah. I need to go ahead and steal, yeah. steal yeah. some yeah. of those. I call your name, girl. I call your name. I know that. I know that. Stop playing, man. Yeah, Switch. I didn't know that. She don't do it. I thought you was on this. Man, cut the damn play. No, no, cut it out. Keep it on. You see, I know I know songs. I don't always know who sing it, but I know songs. I'm the same way. I play Switch a lot, and she don't even like the song because I play it so much. For real. But let me tell you about him. <laughs> oh, my song, but let me man. tell you about him. Like, I like okay. If you play a song, I, it takes me a minute to figure out what the song is. Oh. You can play the song for two seconds. He already know yeah, what it is. means. Yeah, I know. I'm you like, play one beat. I mean, just a beat. Yeah, yeah, you don't hear it, the right? words. <laughs> I gotta hear. I'm like, hold on. Let the song start, and then I can tell you what. Okay, yeah, no, that's, that's it. Look, that's a night. DJ ear. Now, just knowing. I just love music. Yeah. Like it's been that way for me. Like I ride before rap started. When mm-hmm. it ended, it ain't ended yet, but it's a lot of garbage out here that these mm-hmm. niggas doing, but it's some good stuff. I do stuff agree. Too. You know what I'm saying? But I said, when it ended, hip hop is not dead. Mm-hmm. Let's stop playing. Hip hop is not dead. Yeah. It, ain't going, it ain't going nowhere. It ain't going, it ain't going nowhere. nowhere. Because it's not trying to be funny, but these white folks trying to steal it from us. Not exactly. only are they trying to steal they it, they are everything, stealing it. The culture, they're not, everything. They're not going to be able to do they that. Can, you can't emulate us. I could say something, but I'm gonna let Eminem make it tonight. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not like trying Eminem. to tell you that because these niggas would say. Look, after I done said get, Amy Winehouse, look. <laughs> they get, they're giving the torch like Eminem the best I'm rapper done. ever. I'll be like, are you serious? Okay, yeah, I like, can't agree. They be with doing that. that though. A lot of people do that, and it's a lot of people. And I, the people, you'd be amazed at the music and the people that they met, and they still say that. And I'd be yeah. like, how could they say that? That's just so difficult to like narrow down to the best this and the best mm-hmm. that because everybody's so. But it's your special best. in their own unique but it's own unique, your yeah. personality you're right. your your preference you're right everybody I mean, has a different air Eminem can different rap love. I you're ain't right. taking nothing away this from him this is true but he's just when I think of people like even Lil Wayne or anybody oh, now Wayne is one of my favorites yeah you, you can't compare the two but he wasn't in your top three he was in my top yeah. three or, or of course Pimp C is my favorite ever yeah, yeah. he loves UGK like that. for I real yeah I don't sure. even play about that <laughs> that's like almost his number I don't one. even it. play about I that love it. don't play with me about that let's just move on okay I love because it. this is not nothing to play with okay. you do not want to go down that <laughs> I road I like UGK too I gotta have it okay so my next question to you mm-hmm. is being in the industry that you're in, as I said, you meet a lot of people. Mm-hmm. In the radio industry as well, you hear a lot of stories. Mm-hmm. What is a person you've met that was like so heart touching when you heard their story? Oh, heart touching when I heard their story. Maybe you yeah, haven't gotten think, it yet. Yeah, maybe I haven't gotten it. Yeah, I got enough. Because question. that should come on the top of your head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, something that's just like, you. because you, you meet so many people. You do meet. In that yeah, you do. Year. I meet a lot of and people. And she's and such an open think, book, so she mm-hmm. would have knew it right off. I, I definitely would Yeah, but. I think a lot of times I'm more so the person with the story that. I, your story's dope. It's, that's why I'm glad. I didn't know all this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like putting it yeah, out there for yeah, people. And people so always much. come back to me and they're just like, yo, like. I didn't know. Yeah, or they're like. Oh, I thought that you was from North Dallas and everything was handed to you and yeah, you really got yeah. you know all this that you came from. And so. it's so funny because people look at looks. Yeah. And right yeah, that Yeah, y'all looking good up in there. That's right crazy. Now. You know what I'm saying? Don't even know like I'm what you've been loving this vibe. I'm like, looks have or what you looks done. Yeah, y'all doing y'all thing right now. Looks have nothing I'm to do going, with what you have or what you don't have or anything like that. But some people feel like if you have looks, you should have an upper hand. Just like some people think that People mm-hmm. say, if you're white, like you have think, yeah, you have that privilege over somebody who's black. Yeah, yeah, that's true. The same thing as if you're pretty, oh, you should never have to do it out. You should never have to, you know. Yeah. Yeah, nah. it's crazy. I couldn't see you look cute self just running around homeless. Man, <laughs> look, I didn't act like it. You ain't about to see me you ain't homeless. Gonna know. You ain't about to know nothing. I'm about to keep it together. Oh, I love it, man. Okay. So, how hard is it for a woman, a beautiful woman like yourself, to be in these industries and dealing mm. with these people and the difficulties of how and to keep sometimes, it professional? Sometimes some opportunities don't. are missed, True. maybe yeah. behind certain situations. I mean, I'm going in right now. Yeah, I'm just you are all about in to say, because it's I happening. So I know it. It's in ways, there, boy. I can answer this from like my my um, earlier years, and yeah. I can answer it now. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Give us both. both ways. Yeah. Okay. So earlier years, yes, it was tough. It was tough because I was just like, I still wanted to be my feminine self and not be so hard. Like yeah. you know, like not having to be like, give me my money, you know, yeah. but give me my money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like learning how to 
work with so many different types of people and personalities and all these things it took a lot of patience yeah so i just say even with dj and dj has taught me so much patience like just how to deal with people but one thing that helped me like in my younger years was going back to like thinking in my corporate mind yeah. you know what i'm saying like the problem solving part mm -hmm. you know like going back to that is what helped me get through a lot of those moments wow. and it was really really hard because it's like people trying to flirt with you or come at you or hey can you do that like they want favors from you mm -hmm. because they feel like you need them in yeah, order to yeah. work and stuff like that so i can say yes it was much difficult starting out because it's like you almost have to prove yourself. You have yeah. to. You have to come with something. They gotta. You gotta. They gotta see that you really are about what you mm -hmm, talk. Like mm -hmm. what you talking about. Or what people are praising you to be. So now that I'm in this space, years later, I've gained that respect just by always showing up as a hundred percent myself. Mm -hmm, one, mm -hmm. two. People know I really do not play. Like don't play with my money. One. I'm one of those people that when I show up, I always do a little extra. I always do a little bit more. So you gonna get your money worth. I'm not about to cheat you, but you are gonna have to pay me. And it was just learning how to put my foot down without having to be aggressive. Mm. You know what I mean? Like just, and it, it just, it comes with, how can I put this? After you show people who you are, your clientele is based off of like, what you put out, like the energy that you put out. So I don't really have to put up with too much craziness or anything like that. Now, do people try to talk to me? I mean, I feel like that's going to be something that happens more, yeah. all the time. You I, wish, know? I wish more women was like that because they, they don't. That's the part where they still a lot of women to back down. Out. A lot yeah. of women back down like they feel like they don't really know their worth. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like they don't know it. So they back down or feel like they have to take less money and stuff like that. I've never been that person. Yeah. I've never been the DJ to undercut a DJ. Yeah. Or do anything like that. Like I came in, I knew my worth. And I was like, yo, this is this. But I also have a tribe of people around me that keep me in check. Yeah. Like, no, your worth, Tasia. No, you need to be charging this. You need to be doing that. So when you have the right people around you, it's not hard to maneuver and navigate through the entertainment business. You mm. know what I'm saying? Mm. I built those relationships over the past probably like 12 years. It's dope. Uh, you, um, so if you could go back to that 15-year-old girl mm. who had to move out and had to go on <laughs> her own and had to go through everything that you had to go through, mm -hmm. what would you say to her? Um, ooh. So, to help her to prepare for what she was yeah, about to so face. Yeah, so many things. Um, you ain't got no name. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I remember so many times I would just be afraid to even speak out. Yeah. Speak up. Yeah. Or show up as my true self. I knew I was different. I knew I wasn't like everybody else. But a lot of times, my exterior, I had to put on a whole different, you know. Trying to fit in. Yeah. Trying to make people accept. In a sense. Yeah. Like, make people accept who I was. I've always been... But as a young Different. girl, a lot of people don't really know who them they they are. That's true. They're searching for themselves because even like you said, you didn't know what you wanted to be and all of that. Yeah. It's when you got older and really left college that you really it just everything started coming to you like yeah. that. What's crazy mm. is though, it's like even with what I'm doing now, I feel like I still always had the idea of what industry I would be in. I just didn't know what I was going to do. Mm. You know, like I always said, well, I'm going to design clothes. I'm going to have a music group. Or I'm going to do this. And, you know, I'm going to be a producer. I'm gonna do I always knew I wanted to be in entertainment. I just didn't know what it was I was supposed to do. I remember in college, I used to always want to be in, like, the pageants and stuff like that. But I never had a talent. I was like, what would I do? Mm. Like, mm -hmm. what would I what would I show up and do? I'm not about to do a poem. I'm not about to get up here and dance or, you know, nothing like that. I was like, what is Tasia? And I, I remember that. asking myself that then because I could get up there and answer all the questions all day and probably blow you out the water. But I had no, I didn't have a talent yeah, that I could showcase. Yeah, yeah. So that was something I was always in search of. Wow. So what time do you go on when you DJ on the radio? Uh, so I'm on there on weekends for the weekend block party on K104. Um, Friday I'm on 12 to 2 Saturday I'm on Hold on Fridays I'm on 10 to 12 Saturdays I'm on 12 to 2 And then Sundays I'm on 6pm And then 12 to 2 again How can people get a hold of you? You can contact me on IG That's Tasia Alexa A lot of people say it wrong Tasia Alexa It's Tasia Alexa It's T-A-Z-I-A-A-L-E-X-A -A -A. I know because when I first heard Tasia I'm looking up T-A-Y yeah, T-A-S-I-A right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah my like, mom you know had to make it funky She had to make it a little hey, different You know, Tasia we love you We thank you for coming too. on thank Boss so Talk much. 101 yes, man. It's so much fun It's going down 
one, man. Anytime. Check it, man. It's been another great segment mm-hmm. of Boss Talk 101. <laughs> and we out.